Yeah. Okay. This is my audience. Okay. Um, these are my note cards and then my visual aid. Okay. The errors of overturning Roe v. Wade and the regression that is the abortion bans that followed. Today, I will persuade you to believe abortion is a reproductive right that should be guaranteed to the women of the United States and that the abortion bans presently widespread are regressive and based on an errorful decision which was the overturning of Roe v. Wade. As a young woman growing up in the United States, I ask you to look at me and think about the questions I'm about to ask. Why should my once guaranteed reproductive rights be taken from me now? Why, in the United States, the country of individual freedom, should someone else's religion trump my right to reproductive health care? And finally, I ask you, why should the state I live in depict my worthiness to choose what's best for my future? While to many, the topic I'm referring to with these questions may just seem like a controversial battle between pro-choice and pro-life, the errors made while overturning Ruby Wade are regressive, and the abortion bans that followed are also an undeniable. The overturning of Roe v. Wade contradicted many values that the United States was built on. Um, religious pro-life protesters' influence on the government's decision in their ruling has violated the First Amendment, which alludes to a separation of church and state. Leaving abortion rights up to the states resulted in immediate abortion bans uh, and restrictions causing women little to no access. Once preventable reproductive traumas like pregnancy following rape, unexpected pregnancy and poverty, teenage pregnancy, maternal death, and stillbirth are now unavoidable to women in restricting states. This once avoidable trauma being inflicted on women all over the United States and the errors our government made in the process of overturning Roe v. Wade cannot be overlooked and we cannot become submissive to it. The errors committed by the U.S. government concerning the topic of abortion. The first thing I'd like to discuss is a lack of separation of church and state. Um, the abortion bans resulted from religious pro-life protests, which contradicts the First Amendment's allusion to separation of church and state. The second thing I'd like to mention is there's a constant contradiction of if abortion is considered constitutional or if it's not. In 1973, the Supreme Court decided on Roe v. Wade, which ruled that the Constitution of the United States protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose whether she would have an abortion or not. Uh, yet, with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, many states have ruled abortion as unconstitutional. Our government continues to contradict itself concerning the topic of abortion. Um, the third thing I'd like to mention on this topic is extremist ruling in pro-life states. Certain states with abortion bans, for example, Alabama, offer no exception for extremes like rape or incest, and performing an abortion can be as much like up to a felony, which I get from the information from this slide I get from the Palatino and his website. The second thing I'd like to talk to talk about about the regression is the reasons for abortion. Um, number one, pregnancy following rape. As of 2024, the 14 states with abortion bans have an estimated 65,565 pregnancies from rape. Few, if any, of these girls and women received abortions legally in their state, and the data suggest that scarcely available rape exemptions fail to provide reasonable access to abortion for survivors, which I get from TAN and their website. Next is unexpected pregnancy and poverty and teenage pregnancy. While financially stable, wealthy women may be able to travel to another state for an abortion or the abortion pill, a woman in poverty is not able to do that, which just leads to more poverty, um, more children in foster care, which I get from Foster and their website. Um, according to the 2001 teenage pregnancy statistics, around 350,000 teens become pregnant in the United States every year. Reportedly, 82,000 of these pregnancies are unintended. Approximately 55,000, 55% sorry, of these pregnancies um, are birthed. 14% are miscarried. 31 are aborted. 31% are aborted. Which, from this data, we can conclude that 87,885 teens received abortions which I get from American Civil Liberties Union. Um, from this data, we can conclude around taking this data and applying it to today's restrictions and bans. I ask you, why should these young teens be re restricted from their right to choose what's best for their future? Lastly, I'd like to talk about maternal death and stillbirths. Um, the woman I'd like to talk about on this is Kate Cox. Um, um, 
Kate Cox, a married woman living in Texas, was denied an abortion by the Texas Supreme Court, even though she was given a fatal fetus diagnosis and she was given news that carrying her pregnancy to term would have serious risk to her health and future fertility, which I get from Center for Reproductive Rights. So why is defending the reproductive rights of women so important? Women fought and protested for their right to reproductive freedom all through the 60s, which as we know, wasn't a very sexually accepting time. And so when the Supreme Court just finally decided to place Roe v. Wade, um, they got what they've been fighting for for years. Why should we now go back on the progress that these women's devoted themselves to for the women and generations to come? Which I get from Bernhardt and their website. Um, I would just like to make the point that in this country, when laws are put in place causing regression for women, we fight for our rights causing progression, ultimately. Women have been fighting for their rights since the United States was born. I ask you, why would we stop now? I get this also from Center for Reproductive Rights. In wrapping up my speech, I want you to refer back to the questions I asked at the beginning. Do you have a different perspective? Have you learned something about the pro-choice movement that you may have overlooked in the past? In conclusion, many errors were made in the overturning of Roe v. Wade, causing a regression that is the abortion bans that followed. The United States government made contradictions to themselves and to the Constitution, all while, all while committing a huge disservice to the women of the country. With abortion now being left to the states, unjust decisions are being made by state courts, giving women little to no access to their reproductive rights. Once preventable, reproductive traumas like the ones I discussed are now unavoidable to women in restricting states. The regressional decision to revoke women's reproductive rights and the undeniable errors the women committed, the, the government committed while overturning Ruby Wade cannot be overlooked and we cannot become submissive to it. Thank you.